What is up, bros? Josh here. In today's video, we're going over the currently work in progress tier 6 European destroyer, the Vestados. Now, this thing was actually a lot of fun to play, and in this video, we'll show you some gameplay as well as my thoughts on this ship in the direction of this line. Also, this is work in progress, so these stats are subject to change and could change before they officially go live. Now, first of all, let's check out the stats of the ship, and then we'll dive into my captain build as well as modules, and then check out some gameplay. So with this, we do have survivability experts, so that is going to give us 14,200 life, which is actually pretty good for tier 6. Now, tier 6, you're going against stuff like the Farragut, you're going against stuff like the Fubuki, a couple pretty solid ships here, T61 even at the premiums. So these ones are going to be pretty big competitors, but I think the Vestrados kind of finds its little spot in being an extremely fun ship, and even... I think right now it's currently overtuned. Um, but 14,000 with survivability expert is actually pretty solid. Now the guns themselves are actually pretty good as well with three sets of two with a five second reload. I think that is with BFT right now um, with only a 9.9 .9 kilometer detection. It may not seem like a long range and you may go, well, man, I want AFT. But there's a reason you don't really want too long of a range. And I'll explain that once we get into the game a little bit. Torpedoes. Now, the torpedoes of this ship are kind of what sets us apart, and you can actually kind of look at them and just go two by three. Well, that's not a lot. Well, they reload extremely quick, and you're going to hear me probably say this a lot throughout this video and the videos on the other European destroyers, is this is literally quantity over quality. In a way, almost like the USS Sims has, except those are extremely slow, but they don't hit very hard. These ones are still pretty quick, but they don't hit very hard. As you see, the damage is extremely low at a max roll of 75. 500 it's not uncommon to hit two three torps on a ship and only do 10,000 damage on them 12,000 damage but in tier six again we'll get to that while we play some gameplay these are still pretty nasty so this is extremely a quantity over quality um, as you would see maybe like the IGN long reload but the torps hit extremely hard these ones are pretty nasty so Really, really fast reload. They're still pretty quick at 65 knots, which is pretty quick for some slow tier six battleships. And then 10 kilometers, which is really, really good. The AA is all right. Uh, this is one thing that kind of sets the European line apart a little bit is they're supposed to be quote unquote an AA destroyer line. You don't really see it too much at tier six. Um, it's gonna be shooting down a couple planes, but if you're gonna get into that double, as we had a couple of those instances uh, when we were playing it on stream, and we play these ships all live on twitch.tv slash mejash. So, so come check us out. There'll be a link down below if you wanna come hang out at the stream. Um, we were getting a couple double CV games and we definitely weren't getting any clear skies. We would shoot down a couple planes, but you don't have too much defense, at least at this tier. Uh, maneuverability, 38 knots, which is pretty nice. You have some nice speed. Turning circle, uh, turning circle radius is four hundred or five hundred and ninety meters, and then the rudder shift two point four. One of the things is with concealment expert, also camo, we get down to six kilometers on the detection, which is actually quite nice for this tier. Even comparing that to let's say the Farragut, which is at six point six, and even one that is quote unquote stealthy like the Fubuki. You're even stealthier than the Fubuki, almost as stealthy as the Hatsuharu at five point eight. Um, so the Vesteros definitely does have a spot. It's a lot of fun to play. Now the captain build, and that will affect some of the values. This is what I did run on this. Now one of the downsides of the European destroyers is they are going to require a brand new captain or a special captain. And for some reason, I didn't end up using these. So I'm going to do that right there. Um, but I was only using 17 points apparently. But uh, that's one thing. If you have the Friesland or the Buscovica, the tier 7 or the tier 9, one for... Uh, Cole and one, I think I think it's for Cole right now, and the other one for free XP, the Friesland, definitely a good captain trainer for this, so start getting a captain, because you're going to need basically a new one, since it is technically a new nation, but I did run priority target last and concealment expert, or survivability expert, concealment expert, very basic for almost 99.9% .9 of destroyers, I then did pick up Rady Location, and I'll kind of explain why this is really important on these DDs, at least in my opinion. And I did go with BFT. Now, uh, as you'll see in some of the other videos for the European Destroyers, I opted to go for the Torp Reload. I'll explain why in this. And then Adrenaline Rush. Also, you honestly could pick up extra marksmanship because the turrets are a little slow. I'm kind of preparing a little bit for the upcoming modules um, because one of the modules will be a tad faster for uh, the the 
turning of the turrets. So kind of just setting that up. So easily switch that up. If you like adrenaline rush, take that. If you want a little bit of quality of life, take expert marksmanship. And then for the modules here, as we'll go over this, um, I did take steering gears. I took aiming system mod one to help out with the guns a little bit, propulsion, and then main armament. Nothing too crazy there. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of the stuff I was talking about is low detection speed, all that kind of stuff. Um, and especially radio location is you don't have smoke. You literally have um, repair party, which is actually quite, quite nice. You have engine boost and you have repair. You don't have smoke on this line. So you have to learn to play around that. That's why I think radio location is quite nice. Also why not having too long of a range is quite nice. Let's dive into some gameplay. We'll talk about what I think about this ship. Also the line in general. So here we are in game with the Vesteros and I want to kind of go over one of the reasons why I picked BFT over this. Now, um, this is a pretty standard game. I actually really enjoyed playing this ship a lot. It was one I kept going back to to kind of fill in the gaps of playing other work in progress ships. And it's kind of weird because tier six, I think, um, is maybe hit and miss for a lot of people. I think there's a lot of fun ships there. Um, but I feel like maybe matchmaking is something that kind of pushes people away from it, yada, yada. Um, but this one, I felt like even uh, when you were bottom tier, it even did pretty good. Um, when I was going against tier 8s, it didn't really affect me too much. But as you see right here, we have kind of a super unique, maybe not destroyer-friendly matchmaking. And this is one of the games I wanted to show. We only have one Torp. I'll even put a screenshot up here uh, that shows a game where we had a lot of battleships. It ended up being a loss, but actually I think that was our first game we even played. But it was a bunch of battleships, and we just farmed a bunch of damage that's not uncommon because of just how fast those torps launch also this is going to add a whole nother psychology to the destroyer game with how fast these torps reload because it's not kind of a kind a, a normal thing that we're really used to normally you can get to spots because things tend to have a minute plus reload on their torps and then there's travel time these reload quicker than we've ever really been used to, and they tend to be faster and at a longer range. So this is going to add a whole nother level of kind of preparation playing as a DD because blind torps are definitely a thing that will happen now one of the things i did switch up in my captain build especially for this tier is i took bft over torp uh torp reload armament which is one thing that i actually did end up taking on a different on the higher level ones the reason being is that the lower tier destroyers tend to be uh fairly stealthy and you're going to end up trading a lot of life that's one of the downsides of not having camo or not having cam i have cam on not having smoke is that you don't really have a way to disengage so what i did end up taking is and that's one of the reasons is if you're going to go into a gunfight you're basically going to trade life almost guaranteed unless you kind of get a good angle there dd doesn't shoot back yada yada pretty much every time you engage an enemy destroyer you are going to have a problem and you're going to trade some amount of life just because you're detected you're the detected destroyer you're going to take some damage that's just how things work um, one of the things too is I took guns over that just because of the mainly the tier um, You're gonna want to take out those DDs some of the DDs are extremely stealthy and it will be a problem uh, And you will kind of want to take out the target as fast as possible But you will be using the speed 38 knots is pretty freaking good at this tier also um, Yeah, the torps are pretty quick 65 knots now some people are taking torpedo acceleration on a lot of these which would honestly get it up to what 70 70 knots on the torps these torps are getting extremely quick but that's the reason why we're gonna end up gonna get this first blood right here and bingo bango so you throw them in there and you're good to go but yeah, this ship in general I think is a lot of fun but you do have to be kind of I would say maybe not the most new player friendly ship because not having that safety blanket and there were a couple games that I played that if I was in a ship that could smoke even the game I showed you where we had a ton of tour pits if I was in a ship that would that could have smoked I probably would have been able to maybe pull that game back because I would have been able to force the repairs and force some damage in while using my guns while other things spotted. This doesn't quite have that uh, luxury of having that ability and what I mean by that too is um, you're not just kind of able to freely shoot. Now there are some gun builds, we're gonna try that in some of the higher tier ones, but this one, not so much. Um, you don't wanna be trading away life if you don't really have to, because you wanna save that for a later game. Also, fast reload, launch these torps basically as long as possible, and try not to get hit by six kilometer torps from the Konigsberg that won't ever hit anything with those torps. So I wonder why he's pink. 
But also one of the things too I talked about was that the um, that the range on it is fairly low, but it's actually kind of a good thing. One of the reasons that they're having a semi-low range and not being the worst thing in the world is that you get spotted at the range of, and that kind of one of the reasons why I want to take it or talk about this is you get spotted at the max range. As soon as I shoot, I'm spotted at 9.9 .9 kilometers with this ship. That's not the worst thing. Now, obviously, if something goes 10 kilometers away, yes, I can't hit them, which is a bummer in certain situations. But the great situation right here is if that Atlanta would have stayed there and he w maybe would have started firing at me and that Moss potentially got killed a little bit faster, he wouldn't have been able to spot me. So having a, um, a shorter range on a ship that doesn't have smoke, it allows you to have a couple extra windows or a couple extra options to actually disengage from fight. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Most the time people are going to see that very low range and want to take an AFT, which it depends on the person's play style, of course. But for me, I thought that the type of damage you will end up doing tends to be pretty close and kind of danger close with its guns, at least at this tier, so much as I played it, that having the low range really isn't too bad. Um, also, having the speed and having that to be able to disengage is kind of nice too, but you don't have that safety blanket of having the smoke as other destroyers will, especially something like a Royal Navy smoke, even Pan-Asian smoke, where you have that faster reload and you can really use and kind of be a dual purpose ship in my opinion, this ship tends to be a kind of tort first guns later because you just don't want to trade off a bunch of life. Now, one of the things too is this play style of this ship. It's a little bit different than what I normally do, but I love being a destroyer hunter. You still kind of can, but you are going to be mainly focused on torps. So I would say you're a little bit more reliant on your team than a kind of normal destroyer, but I was able to still go out and be a, uh, a gun kind of hybrid. I don't like calling them gunboats. A lot of people do. I would say more of a hybrid ship. And in that, I like going out and hunting on other DDs, giving my team the advantage. One of the things, too, um, this ship in this line has kind of found, I think, uh, overall cool kind of play style. Um, now, I'm not quite sure how it affects the battleships and everything that is going to be affected and the ships in general, but I don't really mind this. And this is one of the big feedbacks that I had back in the day before they released the Benham is kind of how the Sims was. Now the Sims, if you don't remember or if you've never played it, has a very fast reload, but the Torps don't do a lot of damage and they're kind of slow. That's what I was kind of hoping they would end up doing with the Benham is lowering the damage a lot, but allowing for a ton of Torps to be thrown out. This is what this line kind of does, and it's actually quite cool. And also, going against fairly strong tier 7s, obviously, the alpha damage on these guns is pretty strong. Um, the guns overall, I think I, I like them. Perfect example right here is that Atlanta can no longer spot me. If I had an 11 kilometer range there, I would have been spotted. So a perfect example of what I was just talking about is that Atlanta. As soon as I went around the corner, I wasn't detected anymore. The Atlanta couldn't hit me. So a great example of what I'm trying to talk about. But um, yeah, these things have kind of done a, again, I'm going to say this a ton of times, quantity over quality. And that's actually kind of cool. Now, one of the things I'm a little worried about of this ship itself is that uh, this one could potentially be a problem because it's right at tier six. Now, if you guys don't know how the protective matchmaking works, and I'm not a big fan of seal clubbing, now you can say, me, Josh, you don't like seal clubbing, you're playing a tier six. Yeah, it's a tech tree ship, you kind of have to in a way. Um, but I'm not a big fan of, of skilled players picking on new players too much, as low tiers tend to be. I mean, hell, even that's what high tiers tend to be these days. But um, this one is going to actually get into the matchmaking where you're going to be kind of feeding on battleships and a lot of players that are really just sailing in straight lines. And although these torps don't hit extremely hard, brand new players aren't extremely good. And what I mean by that is... People are going to repair one thing. People are going to sail on straight lines. So that is definitely a fear for me um, that these torps are crazy fast. If we look at another ship that has a very fast reload. Also, one of the things I really enjoy about the ship is the firing angles. As you can see, uh, we're going to actually turn in here and kind of test these firing angles a little bit. Um, you can kind of get at a pretty aggressive angle here and actually get all your guns on the target. So actually pretty nice. I wouldn't say maybe 45 degrees or so. So you can actually stay at a pretty aggressive uh, line here. Again, you can definitely start gunboating some destroyers down, but you do kind of have to pick your scenarios right so you don't get destroyed by a bunch of big ships because you really don't have a way to disengage. As you see this for Ataka, but uh, I figured I'd probably be okay against this for Ataka because he's rip firing AP at me. 
you know, it just is what it is. And you'll see us have a little bit of fun with this for Ataka as well. Um, but yeah, so the tier six, uh, having kind of this fast reload in this tier is definitely a little bit of a worry for me. Um, so I think that we'll probably end up seeing a bit of a change here, maybe a nerf to its torp reload and maybe even a nerf to its detection. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do because you kind of need a low detection to have this type of playstyle work 100%. But I could see a nerf definitely to um, to its uh, its torp reload because that is something that can be very very dangerous if done correctly. Um, this game was actually kind of uh, a better one to show because it shows it not in like a good scenario really. Only having one battleship, which we'll eventually pick on a little bit later, but really kind of a scenario where it's about as uh, about as bad as it can get, right? Like. There's, there's a bunch of destroyers, which is okay, but you kind of have to trade off some life, and we just approach them pretty correctly. A bunch of cruisers, no battleships. We also played against some CV games, and we had some fun in those. And you're going to see me have a little bit of fun here with this Furutaka. Uh, poor guy. Now these guns, again, are 120, so they can definitely Citadel low-tier cruisers. And you'll see us Citadel some low-tier cruisers right here. Uh, so we can kind of enjoy this if we want to check this out. But um, overall, I like this play style. I really do. Um, but it is definitely going to be one that's maybe not the easiest for brand new players. And what I mean by that, and there's some Citadels right there, is that not having smoke and not having kind of the normal, I would say, destroyer life, um, is something that definitely is going to be a bit of a problem for people. Again, I wouldn't quite call it as as uh, what's the right? I wouldn't quite call it as maybe as hard to play as a French uh, French destroyer. I would say that's maybe one of the hardest lines for newer players to play, just because it's it's tough to engage the right scenarios. Um, this one definitely will be a bit more complicated than let's say like a normal USN IGN something like that. Um, this one will take a little while. Also, it's not very friendly for new players because you don't have uh, the accessibility to other captains. Um, you are going to basically have to start a brand new captain. However, though, with the line coming out and even with some premiums uh, coming out for this nation, um, you at least have a chance to start on it. But it is kind of the downside of these brand new lines and completely brand new nations is that if you don't have um some elite commander xp lined up you're gonna have to farm out a brand new line and that's always a brand new captain and that's it is always a bummer when it comes to um destroyers especially because you want to get that concealment expert as fast as possible so this congo is going to do a great example of explaining uh, Perfectly what I mean um, for lower tier battleships. Um, again, this is where people are going to be learning the game. And I try to kind of I'm basically completely against kind of low tier picking up people too much. But, um, you know, it's this is where people are going to learn. And so if we get more spammy, um, I'm a little worried that maybe this is the direction that Wargaming is going to go with Torps as we're seeing it. And that's kind of, a, I guess, another topic. But as we've seen um, with the with the changes to a whole bunch of stuff is um, we've kind of seen the spamming. We saw ships all last year, all 2019. These ships are just spam, spam, spam guns. Now we're kind of seeing a line of spammy, spammy torps. Um, so are we seeing a whole nother wave of spamming? And now I know that battleship players absolutely love getting torp. Now these torps, you know, to a point tickle. And even when I played one game with one of the higher tier ones, um, he says, man, uh, basically, growled the battleship the entire time as we picked apart his, his team and he said as he was on basically j10 getting farmed by my torps at least your torps don't do anything little did he know he was completely out of the game the entire time and i farmed 120k off the rest of his team but it's a spammy spammy world you know is this is this the direction that this line is going to go however i do have a blast playing these ships but um you know the people have a blast playing the Colbert and all these other spammy Smolensk and yada yada, but are they good for the game? That's one thing that maybe is left up to um, the person playing and playing against. But overall, I think, and there's a nice little Kraken, we don't get the rewards because they're test ships. So there are a couple uh, worries I have with this is the direction of, um, of this line, although it's a lot of fun to play. I enjoy this ship, obviously, you know, just straight up tends to be if the if we're having fun in this work in progress phase it's probably gonna get nerfed um so i could see them easily touching the torp reload um on this but if they do touch the torp reload again i didn't really have anything that sped it up other than adrenaline rush so you could offset the offset it with taking uh torp armament instead of uh, bft 
So we'll see what they end up doing there. I could definitely see them touching the ship in a couple places um, and probably the fun places. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, there's the Vesteros, the Tier 6 European Destroyer. I'm having a blast with this ship. Uh, I hope you guys are excited for it. It's a different play style. It's unique. Um, I'm a little worried about maybe what it is kind of, uh, you know, the direction of this. We're going to get faster, faster torps. We're going to get spammier torps. Is that what we really need? Who knows? But overall, I'm having a lot of fun, so at least I'm optimistic, as always. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.